Howdy, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Console Info, a more in-depth look into some of the technologies that you use every day in your JavaScript lifestyles. This episode, I want to go a little bit in-depth and show you a new feature from the team at NPM. NPM 5.7.1 is out, and with it is a brand new tool called NPM CI. The cool thing about NPM CI is that it is built to be fast and also to be used in a CI environment, hence the name. Also, did I mention it's fast? Well, they have a blog post about it where you can read the details, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to show you what it looks like in action. I have a local repository that I'm going to show off how the NPM CI tool works. First thing that I want to do is remove all my node modules to make sure that I am not cheating. Uh, and then I'm going to just use the normal NPM install to have a benchmark baseline about what the default speed actually takes for a normal application. And if I actually open up a new tab while that installs and show what my package JSON looks like, uh, you can see that it's a pretty standard React-based app with Apollo and GraphQL and all those things. And it takes you know a little bit of time to actually install all those things. So this is very typical to your application that you'd have. Uh, this is a repo that I have called Dibs that's on my uh, GitHub repo, hswolf slash dibs, if you want to actually test this out locally yourself. So it's still installing. We have some native things going on. Uh, I think it's going to be done soon. I tested this beforehand, and it took about the time that it would take me to stall while I talk here. And there I have, 37 seconds, very cool. So that's not too much time, but especially when you're doing things often, you want things to be faster. Again, removing M no modules to make sure that things are consistent. And then the easy way to use uh, NPM CI, make sure that you're using at least 5.7.x, uh, specifically 5.7.1 or greater is better. Uh, and you can do NPM CI, run that. And again, this is built for CI environments. So you have Travis, Jenkins, wherever you have, and you're actually building assets on that server or you're actually running tests on that server, using NPM CI is going to be a much better way to have your dependencies installed because it is much faster. If you recall, we have 37, uh, almost 38 seconds in our first install. NPM CI is going. Can I vamp anymore for time? Is that possible? Want to hear me sing? I don't. I will not sing for you. I could also cut this out, but I think it's enough time that, oh, there we go. 28 seconds, that is actually a whole 10 seconds faster. And like, it's not a huge amount of improvement, but if you actually take that in aggregate over many installations, that saves you a lot of time. And if you run this again and again, it's much better. And the way that NPM CI works is that it actually just looks at your package dash lock dot JSON file. It actually ignores your package JSON file entirely. So if I were to cap my package uh, lock JSON file, you can see all those things in there. And actually, even more interesting, if I were to remove my package lock file and try to do npm CI, you can see that it actually it actually requires a package lock JSON file to be there to actually work. So if you are using CI, you are using npm, and you have a package lock JSON file, I would definitely recommend you switch over to npm CI to save you time, money, and peace of mind. This has been the console info episode about NPM CI. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.